Last night, the Recognize Us movement requested and had an open forum at Hendricks Chapel. I'm Taylor Lang, and I'm here with Recognize Us member Danielle Lippman. How are you, Danielle? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And can you tell me how you got to be a part of this movement? Yeah, um, I mean, seeing the videos was absolutely horrific, but honestly, I wasn't that surprised. Um, as a Jewish woman on this campus, I've been called slurs a lot. Um, I've been told to get back in this oven um, by members of Greek life, by members who are not in Greek life. And um, earlier in the semester, I was actually um, molested by a member of Theta Tau. Um, and um, like other brothers in the fraternity knew about it and continued to harass me. And um, I just, I knew kind of after the video came out, um, no matter how like hard it was gonna be for me to share my story, um, it's wrong. I mean, it's just not <laughs> right. And my story is not, like a unique one. It continues to happen on this campus all the time. Um, I'm a two-time survivor of sexual assault here on this campus and like there are tons of women before me who t this type of thing have happened to and unfortunately there are going to be a lot of women after me who this type of thing um, has happened to and I just want to create change because people who are minorities on this campus and who are oppressed on this campus like are done it's this is not fair and we need to stand up and come together and put an end to all of this now uh, you handed a petition to the chancellor and asked for certain you know goals to be reached what were some of those goals on the petition um, well first and foremost I want to give recognition to Joe Johnson who worked incredibly hard on writing this petition. She is um, just amazing. Um, so one, I'll just sort of read through it. So one of the demands is um, after the audit we want to make of Greek life, we want to make sure that those results are like available to all the students because we want to make sure it doesn't get swept under the rug. Um, the um, diversity and implicit bias training um, we want to be reshaped um, because right now it fully doesn't actually really exist and it should be included in um, like the first year courses. Um, professors and teaching assistants have to also go through diversity and implicit bias training. Um, actual useful responses should be put in place to service individuals who are victims of sexual assault and we want to replace it's on us with a more actual in-depth mandatory educational first year program because right now it's very ineffective it's like a sketch comedy thing and people just get up on stage and people leave laughing which is not a good message to send about sexual assault and we want better um, provisions for Title IX to have more officers there um, because right now two officers for the rampant amount of assaults that go on on campus is fully not enough. Um, there also needs to be just a larger investment in the amount of people at the counseling center. Um, this is not on the list of demands, this is just like from my experience. There is um, a small amount of like support groups on the counseling at the counseling center and you can only join at the very beginning of the semester there is a sexual assault support group but i'm sorry like i don't plan on getting sexually assaulted and say hey i want to join this group at the beginning of the semester and so if you come to them in the middle there's not much they can do for you um we want all of the um, campus buildings and very specifically the LGBT Resource Center to um, be completely accessible to all students. Um, and so there also needs to be a budget 
um, for ASL interpretation and the community access real-time translation for meetings and events because that does not happen at all events. Um, Syracuse University has to for sure hire more diverse staff because people in class do not see teachers that look like them or have the same religion as them and that can be very disheartening and counterproductive to their student experience um, and their timelines on the petition. And we have gotten around 800 signatures so far, which in under 24 hours, which I think shows that there's a lot of people out there that really support this and it's, it's a very serious thing. I mean, students here are really suffering. <laughs> You uh, talked about Title IX, and actually last night at the forum, um, one of the officials promised that there would be a fund created today to help Title, title IX um, people who are trying to get their transcripts um, get it instead of having to pay for it. The university would help them pay for it. Um, what is the consensus, and how do you feel after the open forum last night? Um, I mean, with that, it, it's amazing. I really hope that they follow through, because if not, they're really gonna hear from us. <laughs> um, if that happens, I think it's really gonna help a lot of people who are struggling because it's hard enough and takes so much bravery and strength to go to Title IX and to tell your story and to get the protection and the help that you need. But then to have to go back and ask for your transcripts and to hear the word no and to hear that you have to pay anywhere from 200 to $600 to get your transcript and then to pay for a lawyer to get protection from your perpetrator, the person that has hurt you, it's horrifying, it's disgusting, and I just can't imagine like how the university could do that to you when they're supposed to be protecting you. And so if this is something that is real and is happening, I really hope that people use it and people can get their transcripts and it just, it would make me feel really happy. I just, I'm a little wary, but I really hope that it's something that happens. If not, they're gonna hear from us. So now you talked about how they have to go and hire an additional lawyer on top of, you know, getting their transcripts and paying for that. There are lawyers available for students for free at Syracuse, um, but they cannot access them. Why is that? If you are um, sexually assaulted or in a um, violent relationship with a student here on campus, you can't use the lawyer here on campus because that could be, in theory, like a conflict of interest because then that other student wouldn't be able to use that lawyer. And so you need to go out and hire your own lawyer, which can cost up to $100 an hour just to talk, not even to use them in court. I'm already a student. I don't have really the time. I don't have a car. I can't go off campus to find a lawyer. I don't have the time. I'm studying. I barely have the time to deal with the trauma of sexual assault or relationship violence. I don't understand, like it cannot be that hard to provide a little bit more support when even the counseling center as well. You call and you say, hello, help me, I've been sexually assaulted. And they're like, we can see you in a week. I'm sorry, what am I supposed to do for this week when I've just been molested or raped? Like, what do, what do they want us to do? I've also had a friend who called and literally said, I am thinking about committing suicide, didn't say suicidal, but said thinking about committing suicide. And that was not enough to get into the counseling center. I just, they're not doing enough, and I don't know when or what will allow for more. And this is why I'm so happy that the Title IX concession happened, because I really, it's a small step, but I think it really can allow for much bigger steps, and I think it can really help a lot of people. We've talked about sexual assault survivors and how the movement is hoping to help them. How is the organization able to work with such a diverse group of people who want such diverse different ways of change? Yeah, I think that's a really great question. I think it's something that 
everyone in the movement is also asking themselves, because I think that's the big question. Um, I think the first and foremost thing that everyone remembers and, and recognizes um, is we all have a lot of love for one another and recognizes that, yes, our struggles are different, but they are all struggles, um, which is sad that we're united by like such awful experiences, but that is sort of the basis and also intersectionality is, is really important to the group. Um, everyone has different issues, but they are all incredibly important and um, no one issue is more important than the other and we all mourn the issues together and celebrate the wins together. Um, everyone in the movement yesterday was so excited about the Title IX concession, regardless of if it was something that you, you know, have experienced or not. And everyone continued yesterday to think about other issues, though, and how we can move forward. Um, and so I think sort of mourning together and celebrating together, regardless of what your issue is, and being mindful of the intersectionality and also the issues that you don't have, but that other people have, is really sort of at the forefront of, of the movement. And the semester is winding down. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you see um, the movement carrying through into the next semester? Are there things that you personally are working on over the summer? Yeah, um, I think that's something we all as well have been thinking about. Um, this is not something that we want to stop. Um, I, I, we all plan on in the fall and the summer continuing the work and we want to make sure that the administration and the campus does not forget about what has happened. And I think it would be, sorry, I'm so sorry. Can we You're redo okay. that? Yeah. All right. And in three, two, one. So now the semester is winding down. Um, how do you see this movement carrying out throughout the rest of the semester, um, over the summer and into next semester? What are you personally doing over the summer? Um, well, so I think the, I don't want to talk on behalf of the movement, but I, I think as a whole, that's something we recognize and want to make sure that in the fall, there's still momentum and that we remember what has happened and continue because these struggles are still going to happen. And we do have, or Joe put demands on with the petition, there are time frames. And so if those time frames are not met, let's go, we're ready. Um, I personally am working on a project um, that is, it's in the works, but I think it's gonna be called What Were You Wearing? Um, and it was originally done at the University of Arkansas and it was then brought to, um, I believe it was University of Florida or Florida State. Um, and I'm planning on bringing it here I'm working with uh, my advisor in Falk and um, another professor in Falk and potentially the Office of Health Promotions and hopefully SASE. And um, I am that girl, so I'm really trying to bring it to a lot of different organizations on campus. Um, and it looks at um, sexual assault survivors and the idea that after you're assaulted, one of the first questions that you get asked, which is really victim blaming and is horrifying is what were you wearing and I have been asked that multiple times of the multiple sexual assaults that I've experienced and um, it's really a almost art installment but also a research project um, where anonymously a survey will go out and people will um, donate their clothes from their assault and the clothes will be on display with like a story um, and I think it'll be really powerful and connected to the movement. And I think other people in relation to the movement are also sort of doing individual projects as well, which I can't speak on, but um, yeah. Yesterday, uh, four pledges of the former Theta Tau and a current uh, member of the former Theta Tau put in and actually sued the university. Um, how do you personally feel with all of this coming out? Each of the um, men would receive potentially a million dollars with this lawsuit. Oh my God, I 
cannot believe it. Like the privilege that these, I don't even want to call them men, like these privilege that the boys are showing is out of this world. They're saying that like they are diverse and that they don't want to be seen as racist, sexist, homophobic, anti-Semitic, which they spelled wrong in the article. They said anti-Semitic, which is like animals showing their colors, by the way. So like if you're going to be, you know, all of those things, spell it right, just in my humble opinion. Um, like they're saying that it's emotionally taxing on them and all of this. Think about all of the people that were affected by this video. It's been emotionally taxing on us. And for me, I have not slept. My PTSD has skyrocketed. It's affecting my academics. Where's my $1 million? Like, boys, are you kidding me? And if it's affecting them and they didn't want to be seen as all of those things, maybe you guys should have spoken up when this sketch was happening. Maybe you should have said something sooner. Maybe you guys shouldn't have been in the sketch in the first place. I mean, being a bystander is just as bad as like actually being in this skit or whatever they're trying to call it as an excuse. We all saw the video. I don't know why they're trying to like make an excuse out of it. If they really didn't want to be seen as racists and anti-Semitic and homophobic, they really could have just stepped up and ended the skit or sketch as it was happening. It's a little too late to be you know, apologetic. And they're not even apologetic. They're blaming us and the school for the way that they're being seen. The video is proof for the way that they're being seen. I just think it's, it's a sad excuse of them pulling at straws for the consequences of their actions. I really want to thank you for sharing your stories and your time and your hopes for the future. Um, again, I'm with Danielle Lippman, a member of the Recognize Us movement. I'm Taylor Lang. Have a great night, Syracuse.